Hello everyone, and welcome to our How to Pick Your Cooling Guide, brought to you by PerformancePCs.com. Today I'm going to talk about a bunch of different things, but really what I'm getting after is helping you guys pick out the right coolant for your custom loop. Whether or not you've got a brand new loop, one that's 10 years old, if you're using hard tubing or soft tubing, doesn't matter. I want to help you guys find what's going to fit in your build. Before we get on to talking about all the different types of coolants we carry at Performance PCs, I need to tell you guys about preparing for your new coolant. As I said before, if you have an old loop or a new loop, it doesn't matter. I would still highly recommend cleaning out your system with at very least a flush with distilled water. If you do have brand new parts, usually this is okay, but even with something like brand new radiators, you want to pick up something like Mayhem's Blitz Part 1, otherwise Primo Chill has a rad clean as well. There's a few different options. I highly recommend thoroughly flushing new radiators. Even though they are new, they still quite often have flux and just other debris inside them from manufacturing them. There's really no way to avoid it. Beyond that, if you do have an older loop with some coolant buildup and whatnot, uh, I highly recommend breaking down your loop if there is anything like buildup. I recently broke down this mono block here, which you can see it still doesn't look brand new even after cleaning. However, I did take the time to get rid of any debris, particles, whatever in there. So then when I go to use this in the future, I shouldn't have any issues with my coolant. Whereas here's a GPU block that I've used in the past but have not cleaned. You can see there's some buildup and there's still some residue in there. There's buildup between the plexi and the nickel, which really won't ever come out with just flushing it, even with cleaning products usually. Uh, so you do have to break something like this down. Whether or not it actually cause issues with your new coolant, uh, that's up for debate. However, in my opinion, I really wouldn't risk it because if it does, then in another month or two, you're going to have to break it down and clean it anyways, and then buy more coolant. So you're much better off being safe over sorry. So I would highly recommend breaking down any used loops if you've used any kind of coolant in the, in the past. We have a bunch of different guides and streams on how to clean your loop, so I'd recommend checking out some of our old videos if you want a more in-depth guide on that. Now let's talk about the good stuff. All the different types of coolant. So there's a main two categories, I would say. There's your translucent and your opaque coolants. A translucent coolant would be something that you can see through a clear coolant, um, whether or not it's red, green, blue, it doesn't matter. It's still translucent. And then your opaque would be something more like this, where it's a solid color or pastel is another term if you're working with mayhem stuff, uh, light does not go through this coolant. Now there's really a whole other category altogether as well, such as like your show coolants, like Primo Chill View, whether or not you call it a show coolant, uh, that's your own thing. Uh, Mayhem's Aurora is another one. These coolants I would really classify as more of a show coolant and kind of a temporary use thing. I know people have gotten View to work for quite a while, same thing with Aurora. Uh, it's just really a case-by-case -case basis, and if you're a newcomer, I would not recommend going with this unless you really are interested in putting the time into cleaning your stuff properly after using something like this. Otherwise, you got plenty of cool options like this EK Cryofuel Mystic Fog. Uh, this stuff is interesting. I'm not sure if I can call it an opaque or a translucent yet. You can see it in the loop behind me. It really does let a lot of light through, so it's almost a translucent, but it does also reflect quite a bit, and it's not really necessary to completely see through. This is a good middle ground so far that I've found. Uh, really, any of the coolants from EK or Mayhem's and Primo Chill, I've had pretty good luck with. If you guys want to, you can see all the coolants that I've tested in the test bench behind me here uh, in our previous videos and streams, so there's always that to check up on. The thing to keep in mind with your colored coolants, either translucent or opaque, is that they do eventually stain things typically. Um, the darker colors, reds and whatnot, usually do it much quicker and are harsher. It also depends on the type of tubing and uh, blocks you have in your system. That makes a difference. I've found that no matter what, over time, soft tubing does stain and degrade. Really, that's kind of a use item. I would just maintain my PC if I had soft tubing by replacing the tubing every year or so. Uh, otherwise, with harder tubing, like acrylic, it doesn't uh, usually happen as quickly or as bad. Um, sometimes you can even just get away with wiping out the tubing if the flush doesn't get it. Otherwise, you will see some buildup or staining over time with your colored coolants. 
If you want to avoid that altogether, I'd highly recommend just picking up some distilled water and then these additives such as Mayhem's Inhibitor Plus and Biocide Plus. I know other brands carry some uh, inhibitors and biocides. No matter what, you want to run some kind of inhibitor and biocide combo in your coolant. If you're buying any of these colored coolants like you see behind me, they already have these added in so you don't need to add this on top. However, for a really simple, stable coolant, I found just distilled water plus your additives works really well. You can always try to spice it up a little bit by adding some dye. It won't, there's no such thing as like an opaque dye, so this will still be a translucent coolant. Um, however, you can turn it whatever color you want, and typically you won't have really any more uh, longevity issues with your coolant by adding a dye. However, as I said before, you can experience some staining to a certain degree. Another thing to consider when you're picking out your coolant is what type of loop you have. More specifically, your pump res combo. So like the test bench behind me has a pump res combo just like this, a D5 combo. Pretty simple, basic setup. These have been around for years. Otherwise, there's cases and distros and whatnot, whatever you want to call it, a manifold, a distro. This is a wraith. Um, that's a manifold in there. If you're running something more like that with a manifold or it's a case that's a manifold, I would probably stay away from coolants such as Vue and Aurora, uh, any of the harsher coolants like that. You're definitely going to have a lot more maintenance when they do eventually require it, uh, just because this, like a pump res combo like this, is much simpler than taking apart that and scrubbing it. So I would recommend it just for your time's sake. Uh, if you are that adventurous, go for it. Otherwise, uh, that's my rule of thumb for you. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of options when it comes to coolant for your custom loops. Don't hesitate to reach out and shoot me a question at my email address. You can find it in the description below. Please remember to just take your time, read the info and the specifications on the coolant you want to buy, and don't hesitate to ask questions. Post them in the comments below, and please remember to like and subscribe so we can keep making great content like this. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and happy water cooling!